The LEGO B24 Lip Reader is almost done. Hello everybody, Big Planes, and today this is going to be update 2 for the B24 Liberator, and there has been an enormous amount of progress that has been made on this thing since the last update. First of all, you may notice that it is mostly complete. Last time we saw it, it was just the bit of a wing section up here in the front. Now it's an entire aircraft, and obviously there still are some parts that are missing out of it, like around this area there, I think some wing parts. Back here, there might be some missing stuff, but it's pretty close to being done. And even so close to being done, that has its livery. And this is going to be the B-24 Liberator Witchcraft. And I, yes, I know this thing has already been done before by a Lego creator that goes by the name of Nate Flood. Did a very good job on it. But I've been, I sort of wanted to improve upon his design. And we're going to start off with... The point that there are only so many ways that you can build a B-24. In the ways that I chose to use here, we're using these curved slopes here. I really, really like these. And I really think using curved slopes really adds a lot to your build. But I also wanted to capture the Davis wing. And the Davis wing is a wing that's very narrow and long. So a narrow and long wing was very high priority for this thing. And yeah, that's, that's also a very, very, very distinctive trait of the B-24. Another thing you might notice is that it's very boxy. The B-24 was known for being a relatively boxy aircraft. You can see that it is somewhat square, somewhat unattractive, if you will. But that is very, very like the B-24. It's very much like that. And what the big challenge was with the wings, and this is where mine starts to become very different than Nate Flood's, is that mine uses a very, very advanced system, <laughs> advanced system of hinging them. And you can especially see it from angles like this. We are parallel to the body right now. But you can clearly see that there is a slight tilt at the leading edge of the wing and a slight tilt at the trailing edge of the wing. And this is very noticeable and very important because I could have just put this wing straight on, but that would not have looked good. And you can see here that it does tilt back just a little bit going all the way back. And what this does is it gives you a slight it's a slight angled back of this wing right here. You can sort of see what I mean. I was showing you that in the last update video, which is very conclusive as to why this thing has been so complicated and very difficult. Another feature of the B-24 is, well, first of all, before I get to that, a very common thing going on with these planes is that they will start to warp their wings, which means that the wings will start to warp downwards over time, and that doesn't look very good. And especially since some of these planes are supposed to have the heriels, which is where the wing actually goes up instead of down, then that starts to look really, really bad. So not only did I have to tilt this wing back like this, tilt it back, but I also built into it a way to tilt upwards. So as you can now see, these wings start off here and go up like that. It's kind of hard to see it, but that also counteracts the downward warp of the wings, and it also helps with the just the major shaping of the wings. This is much more noticeable from the very back, whereas you can see the wings start down here lower, and they actually go up. This was a very important thing that I needed, needed to get on this aircraft, mostly because my B-29 has it, my, my 747 has it. Everything's having it built into it nowadays. And this is just very important that I do that. And I've also cleaned up the back of the wings. So these look a lot more aerodynamic. You can see that the airfoil is much more perfected at this point. It, can, it starts off relatively sharply sloped here, and then it comes back slowly, sloping backwards. This is very important that you get this on the B-24. And the wingspan of this thing, if you were wondering, is about uh, three feet. It's about 30, I don't know, 36 inches. That's about three feet. I'm not sure, but no, that's not three feet. That's like two feet, but whatever. It's big and you, you know that. And this is definitely one of the larger World War II aircraft other than the B-29. That thing is massive, but yeah, this thing is pretty large and I'm very excited to do this. Now, the reason I did witchcraft, even though witchcraft has been done before in the past, was because I've actually been to the witchcraft multiple times. It comes to my local area, and I've met a lot of the people that fly it. I've actually taken an older model of this plane that I've built over to have pictures with it, and I very much like the witchcraft. It's a 
very sort of sentimental plane. I feel like it's very well designed, and that's why I wanted to do a witchcraft. And it's sort of too bad it's already been done, but that's okay because we're going to take our own original take on this. I'm going to try to take my original take on this as much as I can. But yeah, this thing is sort of interesting. And there's a lot of things going on here that you may not understand why they're going on, but they're really necessary. And a lot of really tedious work. Like, again, this wing is angled back, so all of these engines have to be angled slightly inward slightly inward and able to remain parallel to the main body of the plane whereas they need to be slightly behind the second one so that's why you see these engines that have these little cracks here because they need to be angled inward and able to be parallel with this because if i just bolted these things straight on to the wing they would be all pointing outward and it wouldn't look right at all and so that's a major problem and another major problem that you may notice is that it is not standing on landing gear right now as you can see it is on the ground firmly that is because I have not created the landing gear yet. I thought I would update you before I created the landing gear, mostly because that takes a lot of work and it's going to be really hard because these wings are angled in a very funky way. So yeah, that's going to be really interesting. Once you flip the aircraft over, you get to see a lot of little things that really are incomplete and in why this is still a work in progress video. You will notice a lot of holes in the bomb bay down here and in that area and you also notice a battery pack that is where the power functions battery pack that powers the motors is currently being held and directly behind that you can see that's where the ball turret is going to go i have not yet designed one yet but i have sort of made some room for it so when that does come around it will have some space and you can always look onto the wings here and sort of see the techniques that i use to hinge these engines you can see that i use just your standard plate hinge there and this is how these sort of interact with each other. I've left those open because they need to be able to air out so I can access them if they are having some troubles. You can see that the landing gear is on just your ball hinge. This is not the final version of the landing gear, though it is a version that functions currently, so I am perfecting that. I still need to build the engine cowlings that are going to go all the way back. It's sort of just all the way back like that. These should help to stabilize the engines, or not the engines, the landing gear, so these don't flop around so much when they're in use. But as of right now, I have not really gotten to those yet because I've been working on the top of the aircraft. That should be in the final video. You can see at the very front here, we have our little nose gear. This is not completely filled in yet, but you can see the nose gear just pulls out like that. And you can see that there is a little window here for the bombardier. That's where he would be looking out. And yeah, there's really not much going on here. I'm really happy with how this tiling on the bottom of the aircraft turned out. That took some interesting techniques, but I'm quite happy with how that turned out. And yeah, a lot of upside down building going on here. I spent a lot of time yesterday building this thing and you can see that it uses those bricks on side construction to be able to interface very nicely with this sort of upper panel up here and that is something that I'm very happy with. These interesting looking things here, these are the bomb base, they're going to be remaining in a per permanently open position because I am too lazy to design some uh, garage door bomb bays and those would be too fragile so they're not going to be on here but this is where the battery pack is you just press the button and it turns the propellers there is a central motor up here and that powers the shaft which goes into here this is very complicated even though it doesn't look like it there are all sorts of ball hinges all sorts of weird things going on and there are a lot of geometry a lot of a lot of things that were needed to be able to build this thing. But it is really getting close to being done, and I'm very, very, very happy with it. All right, now that we have flipped back over, we get to see the top of the aircraft. And I'm just going to say my closing thoughts on here. And my closing thoughts about this aircraft are that it's a very, very beautiful thing. I really like it. I really like those fender pieces that I use for the engines. And I will try to get a picture of this thing with the actual witchcraft. I will try to take it there and get a picture. Maybe get some pictures with the airmen that flew this thing back when it was in its heyday during World War II. But this is really a turn that I've wanted to take. I've been doing a lot of rockets, as you can see lately, and I'm telling oh, you, yeah, I'm going to build it later, but I have no parts for it. But I wanted to build some more aircraft. And this is definitely something that's been on my list for a long time. I had a version of this plane, Witchcraft. It's been sitting on that shelf over there for a very long time. And it got sort of destroyed a while ago because it was old and like five years old. And it's gone. But this is the new version of it, and I'm very happy with how it turned out. The B-24 is a very very important aircraft of World War II, and I think it really should be honored. This is really to go along with the B-17. I have not really done a B-17 yet, or if you take that back, I have done a B-17, but it no longer exists. So that'll be an interesting project. 
but I'm just sort of just admiring this B24. It took a lot of engineering to engineer that core there for the wings, but I'm very happy with how these Davis wings turned out. Like I said, this is not the full tour video, but there will be a very well polished, very nice video coming up with a lot more editing to it and all that. But that's all I really have for this video. Please be sure to hit that like button, as always, and please hit subscribe so you can see all my builds in the near future. So that's all. That's pretty much it for this video. Bye for now.